Asylum, Chapter 4. Over here are the arts and craft rooms. There are two of them due to the different needs of our patients. After all, every pony is different. The room across the way is for the patients that need more assistance. It's mostly hoof paintings, drawings with crayons, play doh, that sort of thing. This one here is for the patients like you that we can trust with more responsibility. You know, having access to clay, oil paintings, and scissors. Applejack glanced over her shoulder as I walked past the two doors. She gave Twilight Sparkle a knowing smile. I bet you think it sounds a bit childish, calling it arts and crafts like this was an elementary school and all. But expressing oneself creatively can be very therapeutic. Twilight nodded at the words and spared a glance through one of the windows. She didn't return the smile. Now, down this way are the life skills classrooms, continued Applejack as she resumed her tour of the hospital. Twilight followed Applejack like a dutiful shadow. She didn't say anything, only nodding when I were prompted by a pause in the noise or a look from Applejack. She had more pressing concerns. What about her other friends? The question had plagued her ever since she had left her room. She had been so thrilled when she had found something of her Applejack in the mirror she was following. She might have a different accent and she might have become a doctor, but beyond the altered history it was still the same pony deep down. Feeling hopeful it was a rare occurrence, and Twilight had savored it for as long as she could. Their tearful embrace had been interrupted by Dreamer with an embarrassed cough, who had told them that dinner was going to be ready soon. After one more examination to make sure that Twilight had recovered from the anesthetic, he had bid his farewell, leaving the two mares to go on to the dining facilities together. With Applejack's help, she had managed to stand upright and walk out into the hallway. Also, her limbs had been stiff, the sense of liberation had put a spring into her step. There were no orderlies with truncheons, no nurses with fake smiles, and no doctors watching her. None save the one she called friend. The sense of optimism she had started to embrace had not lasted long, however. Just as Twilight had allowed herself to take solace in the familiarity of this woods Applejack, the doctor turned to give her a happy grin. Now, how about we go down to the cafeteria, sugar cube? I give you a little tour on the way. It won't take long. Plus, there should be a few of your friends there when we arrive. Isn't that exciting? Twilight had froze. Also, Applejack's expression had been warm and sincere. The words had plunked the cold spikes to Twilight's heart. My friends? She had finally asked, the icy touch of dread returning with unwelcome familiarity. Oh, I know you might not remember any of them right now, Applejack had said as she squeezed Twilight's shoulder, attempting to reassure her. It hadn't worked. No need to be self-conscious about it neither. I'll be there with you, so don't you worry none. Hopefully once you meet them, it should free up some of your memories. So come on, Sugar Cube, let's go get some grub and say hello. Twilight had dumbly followed her while she struggled to rein in her thoughts. Friends. Her friends. This simple phrase was laden with terrible consequences. Somehow she had kept herself ignorant of what Applejack's presence had truly meant. But her words had put the blindfold from Twilight's mind, and she could finally grasp the horrible potential the innocuous phrase represented. If Applejack was here, then what about the rest of her friends? Twilight had been struck mute by the terrible possibilities inherent in Applejack's words. So she had continued to follow Applejack while she had pointed out the sites and locations along the way, not saying a word. She still didn't trust herself to speak. What could she say? Ahead of her, Applejack rambled on about one of the nearby rooms, but Twilight didn't hear any of it. The dreaded phrase drowned out Applejack's words. It had been joined by five names, each one ominously circling her thoughts like buzzards around a carcass. Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, Spike. Each name was accompanied by a burst of images and sense memory, a rainbow streak in the sky, a new dress sparkling in the sunlight, the scent of flower and sugar, the soft melody of birdsong, the loving grin of a younger brother. If Applejack was here, it made sense that the others could be as well. It was a logical assumption after all. But were they as different as Applejack was? Could all her friends be familiar strangers, faces she recognized but knew nothing about? What if Applejack was the one closest to her memories? Could the others be as foreign to her as a hospital was? She wanted to ask about her friends yet she dreaded what answers she might receive. Her tongue continued to lay dormant in her mouth. Twilight tried pushing back against her fears. She wasn't even sure what friends Applejack meant. It was just as likely that in this world she didn't know any of her real friends, 
a more reasonable conclusion was to assume that Applejack meant friends from the hospital. As a patient, they said we're here friends on the basis of artificial memories. It was foolish to fear what was highly unlikely. Twilight truly had nothing to worry about. The voice of logical doubt didn't work. Twilight wouldn't believe the false assurances, despite how much she wished she could. Her insights twisted in on themselves as she continued to replay what she knew in her mind. It was depressingly little. She had nothing to go on, not a hint about Rainbow Dash, Rarity or Pinkie Pie. Even Spike, her brother slash assistant seemed to have vanished completely from her life. Fluttershy, however. The tragic story about the Pegasus Mary resurfaced time and again, unable to be ignored. It wasn't proof of anything, just a tale from this Applejack's past. Yet her attempts to convince herself that it had to be just a coincidence couldn't stop the sort of nightmarish pictures. Each one dragged up from the depths of her mind to torment her. A pony crying in a dark room, a blood-stained chunk of ragged glass, the panicked shouts of doctors as they attempt to keep a half-dead mare alive. It was Fluttershy the orderlies had found. Twilight couldn't know that, of course, but a terrible certainty that it was fact destroyed any attempt at logical skepticism. She could see it as if she was there, her friend sobbing in the darkness while ruby tears leaked from the gashes in her wrists. The fear and nausea from the side were real, even if the images were not. It was surely just a fabrication of a distraught mind, another example of her imagination tormenting her. Yet Twilight couldn't keep from believing the story was about Fluttershy, no matter how much it hurt her. She was a terrible friend for so quickly assuming that she could be the suicidal pony of the story. Even the good was enough to keep her mind from continuing to torture her with the grisly fantasies. Epidex stopped without warning, and Twilight just managed to pull herself short of an embarrassing collision. It was the second time that day that she had almost planted her horn into another pony's backside. Twilight lands up to find an expectant look on Epidex's face, oblivious to the narrowly averted accident. Twilight nodded numbly, too distracted to even blush. Satisfied, Applejack continued her tour, gesturing silently at the door beside her. Behind her, the unicorn plodded onward. Twilight tried to convince herself that this world wasn't hers. Wherever the friends were, they weren't the same pony she had learned to love. The Fluttershy that haunted her mind wasn't her Fluttershy. These ponies were just reflections in a dirty mirror, dark facsimiles of reality. Her real friends were in her memories. In fact, her friends were probably back home in her world trying their best to save her themselves. Twilight repeated the lie over and over as if to make it true through force of repetition alone, desperate to make herself believe. It wasn't working. Every time she tried to force her logical side to accept it, she remembered what she had seen in Applejack's eyes. Applejack had been so different, her accent was muted, her body language was wrong and even her scent was off. The earthen tones of dirt and soil had been replaced with a sterile odor of antiseptics and soap. The past she described was far removed from what Twilight knew to be real. Yet those eyes had been exactly as she remembered, full of determination, compassion and honesty. Beneath the mutated past, it was the same Applejack. Deep down, the bonds of friendship that had given them the strength to defeat Nightmare Moon were still there. Eventually, Twilight found herself unable to repeat the lies anymore. She wasn't going to believe that the Applejack she was following was not, in some way, related to her Applejack. Futility and madness lay down that path. Trying to force herself to believe a lie was anathema to everything she stood for. She needed more information. She needed to find out what had happened. Try try to dredge up some more confidence as she struggled back against the morose thoughts that had plagued her ever since leaving her room. Whatever the truth of this strange world was, she was not going to hide behind lies anymore. This twisted reality would not break her. Flash eyes, soft cries taunted her resolve, the terrible moans rising up from the shadows of her mind. Twilight swallowed. She would have the strength. Whatever anguish she might suffer, she had to stand up to it. There was no other option. Giving in to lies to spare herself the pain of this world's altered past was just another form of self-delusion. This world was not hers, but she would meet its challenges and succeed. She had to pass through this trial without losing herself to despair. If she surrendered, if she gave in, she would never escape. Raising her head a little higher, Twilight forced herself to close the gap between her and her friend Applejack. She would not give in like the sobbing mare of her nightmares. Twilight would fight back, and she would find a way home. The walk to the cafeteria was taking longer than Twilight had anticipated. The cause of the delay was fairly obvious. She considered glancing over at Applejack. The guide had decided to give her the scenic route after all. She wouldn't be surprised if she had been shown nearly every room in the hospital. 
She wasn't too upset though, how could she be? Focusing on what Epijack was saying kept her mind off of what she might find when she finally met her friends. It wasn't much consolation, but it was enough to banish the nightmarish images from her mind. Even the ghostly moans of the not Fluttershy had gone silent, thanks Celestia. Having to follow Epidrick around as she pointed out every bathroom and janitor closet in the hospital was a small price to pay for taking away her nightmares. This here is a musical room. We have all sorts of musical instruments here, Epidrick declared proudly, propping open the door to the room so Twilight could peek inside. We've got a piano, cellos, violins, flutes and the likes. They're all donations of course, so you have to excuse the second half nature of them all, but they work just fine. Twilight took a glance around the inside of the small room, instrument cases lining the wall, circling a collection of chairs and music stands. A white mare with a light bulb cutie mark sat tuning a violin. The dark blue stallion she was talking to glanced up from his cello, noticing the onlookers. He said something to her before they both turned and waved. Hey, Dr. AJ, said the mare cheerfully. Hey, Twilight. Epicek waved back with that artificial smile. Hey, Bright. Hey, a finder. Don't take too long with your practice. Supper is gonna be ready real soon. We want, they said simultaneously. They glanced at each other. Jinx, they shouted in unison, launching them into a giggling fit. Twilight stopped waving at the unknown ponies when Epijack did. It's bigger than I expected, Twilight said, pulling back her head to let Epijack close the door. She tried to ignore the familiarity the two ponies had used when they would called out to her. It brought back dark thoughts concerning her friends she was still trying to suppress. You have enough shares in there for 20 more ponies at least. Do you really have enough patience to use them all? Sure do, sugar cube. We actually have little concerts every once in a while. You know, on holidays and such. You have enough ponies you trust with music instruments to play concerts? I knew you had a lot of patience, but I guess I was still underestimating just how many there actually are. Epidek nodded as she continued down the hallway. We sure do. It's a big hospital and plenty of our patients are responsible enough to handle music instruments just fine. Even most of our long-term guests can be trusted with certain activities. Take the mare back there, bright mind. She's smart, really kind and considerate, and most of the time she's just like any other pony. So much so that it might not even seem like she needs to even be here. However, she suffers from crippling nectophobia. She's afraid of the dark? Not just afraid, Twilight. She's terrified of it. If the lights go out, or even just get dim, she has these terrible panic attacks. They are so bad that she can injure herself and others attempting to find light. Her parents had to commit her when she was still a young filly, after she put her father and sister in the hospital. Twilight and head sharply. She attacked her family? No, no, no. Not like that, said Applejack as she waved her hoof. See, the power went out at their home when they were going upstairs to put her to bed. They've had power outages before, of course. So they usually put her to bed early enough that they could light some candles for her, in case it went out during the night. Whereas this time it happened while her father and older sister were helping her up the stairs. When they didn't have any lights up, Bright panicked and knocked them all down. Her sister broke a leg and her father broke two vertebrae, along with other cuts and contusions. He was nearly paralyzed. Oh. Oh my. Yep. Normally they might have been able to handle it as a family with therapy and medication, but Bright might won't talk about her problems at all. She's in denial about her fears, so there wasn't much her parents could really do. So she's been here at Broadhoff for about a year or so. Her family does come to visit regularly and she gets lessons to make up for the school she's missing. Really, outside of her phobia, she's a regular little filly. There was a heavy silence between the two mares as they walked together. Twilight moored the story over in her mind. So she got committed by her parents, she finally said. I mean, to be stuck in a place like this? It sounds more like a prison sentence than anything. She noticed a shadow cross Applejack's face, but it vanished as quickly as it had appeared. They are not all committed here by others, said Applejack carefully. In fact, the vast majority of ponies we deal with have voluntarily checked themselves in. Voluntarily? Ponies actually want to come here? Sure do. Lots of ponies come here for treatment. We are the biggest psychiatric hospital in Equestria, said Applejack proudly. While we have a pretty sizable long-term population, most ponies are just here temporarily. Some come here back regularly for checkups and further therapy, but most are here for less than a week. 
Short-term patients don't sound like they would be much interested in playing music for the hospital. She pointed out as they turned down another hallway. Well sure, most of the hospital is just like any other hospital really. If you're only here for a day or two, you don't rightly need to have access to arts and crafts, now do you? This part of the facility is our high security wing. Our guests here need to have recreational activities they can enjoy. And music, like painting, is a great source of therapy for many ponies. High security wing? Twilight repeated, her eyes narrowing. Applejack flinched. I, uh, I... I meant to say that this is our intensive care ward. She stammered, unable to meet Twilight's gaze. She really was a terrible liar. Twilight's eyes strayed into the doctor. But you didn't say that, you said high security. She continued to push Applejack, keeping her voice measured and quiet as she advanced on her. High security carries certain connotations about it. Things like guards, and cells, and dangerous criminals. Applejack gulped as her back pressed against the wall. Well, Twilight, um, you see... She said, looking everywhere but the unicorn's face. She had let something slip and had revealed something that she hadn't meant to, and Twilight wanted to know what it was. Especially odd mistake to make concerning that face you made when I called this place a prison. Twilight continued, moving in closer until she was just inches away from Applejack. She had her cornered against the wall like a hungry Timberwolf. So come on, Applejack. We are friends. Why did you call this the high security ring? She had to keep pressing Applejack. Keep her on a back hoof before she could find an excuse. Twilight couldn't have predicted that the excuse might find her.